Great to see you again. It's good to see you, Eileen. The last time we were together, we were playing Tonight Show. That's right. Yes. That's right. But With this. Doc Sevens in yeah. It. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Sincerely, that is Thank one you. of the finest movies I have ever seen. I'm so glad you liked it. I How do you it. feel? I love it. I just love it. I love the reaction to it because um, you usually know right away, you know, when the when the movie is screened for the first time. Um, Either no one says anything at all to you, and they start talking about how much weight you've lost and how nice you look, or whatever the weather, or they come out saying how much they liked it. And uh, I must say, it's been unanimous with this, and and uh, that's very exciting because you never know how something is going to turn out. You really don't. We loved working on it while we were working on it, and we we did have the luxury of a whole rehearsal period before filming, and because the relationships in the picture were so important. Oh yes. Um, and Masha and Christy and, and Joan and myself would go out every night and, and get to know each other even better. And um, it was wonderful to work on this picture. And uh, Neil was there all the time, changing things and rewriting things and, and making it better for us. There was also another reaction I saw. Many people walked out in tears. It, yeah, it affects people, doesn't it? I think the portrayal of the problems with alcoholism are so right. Um, yeah. It's, it's, she, she is remarkable in it. Uh, I know that the one night that I saw it, I had, I had only seen it once, um, that scene when she goes for the drink, it, it was audible in the audience. People said, no, don't, you know, and that's terrific when they get that involved with Well, it. but even your character, because yeah. I, I guess so often as friends we get caught up in the problems of our friends. And, yeah. and they start dumping on us. Yeah. And, and there she was in this, you know, after this, after Joan tells her her problems, and I come in with my problems, and then, and then she has her problems, and uh, I loved that about the picture. I love the fact that they were so close, and that they were dumping on each other all the time, as friends do, you know. And uh, it's a very special kind of script. I mean, and, and I don't think it's the usual what people think of as Neil Simon seems like old times thing. The, the, the comedy evolves out of the situation. Yes. There are certainly plenty of laughs, but uh, the pathos and and. Uh, and the cast seemed to be just perfect. Is it true that when uh, when Neil was writing the character, he wanted to have it be very much like the Jimmy Coco he had met during last yeah, year? Yeah, there, there were yes, there's some elements of that, of course. Uh, Why? Was but he that? does that all the time. Originally, when the character was written, it was a maid. It was a woman's part, and I think in the play. But he's changed the play a great deal. I mean, it's it's not the same as the Gingerbread Lady. It, I, don't, I think there's one scene that's remained the same, and that's the, the opening scene with Jimmy and the, um, the delivery boy. But uh, the rest of it's all been changed. But there were elements that he wanted to be uh, about me, yes, certainly. The, the whole thing about I want to be a star. That, that you scene. said that to him. Yeah, I you? did, I did. And it was, uh, he had seen me in an off-Broadway show, and he came backstage and presented me with the, the script, Elias of the Red Hot Lovers, and I said, is it a good part? And he said, well, it's the only male part in it. It's three women and one man. And I said, but well, will it make me a really big star? Cause I really, and I guess it all had happened then, but that's the way most actors felt. The difference with this character uh, the character that I play in the, in the film, is that that actor will never make it. And that's another layer to play. Um, it, and it's sad because uh, and it's important that you know that, I mean, or that the actor know that. Um, Jimmy Perino will just will never, never make it. I mean, if he, if he had any talents at all, Georgia would have helped him a long time ago. And there are a lot of those actors around. I mean, I have friends, and it's very painful, you know, and, and I've seen them do showcase things, and you think, I, I could never tell them that, you know, because who, who is to tell you, you know, give it up and go into another profession? But he is one of those. What is it that separates those from the talent. real life, the Jimmy Cocos? Well, I guess the, I think talent and, and the idea that, um, it's so funny. Usually people that are talented know their limitations, and people that are not talented think they can do anything. Hmm. It's, it's, you know, I would be terrified to say, I, I want to do Willie Loman. I, it would scare me to death. I'd want to do it. And yet I know other actors who, who have absolutely no talent at all that I could play that part. It's a snap. And I think maybe that's the difference. We always have questions about ourselves, many questions and many doubts about ourselves. And every part is... is um, is a terrific challenge. I mean, so then maybe having it all together personally, yeah, knowing what you're yeah, all about, yeah. makes a difference? Absolutely. I think so. Can will you talk about your lady in real life? Oh, my I think lady, that is so sure. Neat. My lady is Mother Nature. You know, don't, don't, uh, what is her slogan? You, Mother, don't mess, don't, uh, you, you can't mustn't, fool, you can't Mother, fool Nature. Mother Nature. Dina Dietrich, sure. We've been together for a long time, almost 20 years. Isn't that great? And, uh, 
she's doing just great, everybody, just great, you know, still wanting people not to mess around with Mother Nature. You have a special said. relationship, and yet both of you work. Yeah, yes, yes, and, and we both love, and we both have worked for Neil Simon. She was in prison at 2nd Avenue, and then we did a special of his called The Trouble With People, mm -hmm. and we've been on stage together a lot and try to be with each other as much as possible. I read an article in Time Magazine about... Uh, fat people. Yes, yeah. fat yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of that? Well, first well, of all, we had to tell the audience what it said in case they didn't it read it. It said that there were actors that remained fat because they were something about it being afraid that they wouldn't get roles yeah. or something like that. It was that. Kathleen Freeman and Shelley Winters I was and mentioned you. in it. Yes. But i got to tell you, when they called me about that, I didn't know what that, 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 that's what the article was about because I've been on a diet for a year. <laughs> I was well, yeah. I said, you really do look terrific, yeah. Jimmy. and I have lost a lot of weight. But, was there uh, any truth in that, that people stay heavy well, to get Well, I wonder if that's just an excuse. I mean, I think that that's, that's sort of an easy thing to say. I had to gain 40 pounds because I had to play this part. I don't know whether that's true or not. The only time I really would think that that would be true would, would be something like Bobby De Niro, who chose to do that for Raging Bull, sure. but then took it off very quickly. I don't ever remember having to gain weight for a role. You know, I mean, if you're 200 pounds, uh, that's plenty heavy enough if you're 250 pounds, you know, what's the difference, really? Do you worry about how you look or how old you oh, get? Oh, yeah. Or no, not that? how old I get. I really don't care about that, you know. I mean, because I'm not a leading man and I don't have to worry about my looks fading and, and that kind of thing. I think I just get better looking every yeah, year. You know, people were just saying that to you. Sure, I think <laughs> I'm terrific. <laughs> but, so I've never had to worry about that. I sometimes feel very sad about the actors that do. I mean, you know, and, and you, when you think back and, and you see an old film with, um, I don't know, Tyrone Power or something, and you say, my God, look what he looked like, you know. Mm -hmm. What must he have felt like later on? I don't ever have to worry about that because we character actors go on and on and, and turn into Eva Legallians and, <laughs> and, you know, Claude Rains and people like that. And... Um, so that's, that's the part I like very much about being a character man. And when I was reading about you, you fell in love with Priscilla Lane yes. when you were 14 years old. Yes. You saw her on screen. Oh, yeah. In, was that in, in the Bronx in, or Brooklyn? Where that was you? in the Bronx. And that was Four Daughters, yes. I fell mad in love. I had scrapbooks on her. You know she's from New England. No. Oh, yeah. She's married to a doctor. And I was on a, a talk show uh, called... Um, midday or something like that in New York and they knew that I was mad about Priscilla Lane and unbeknownst to me they placed a call into her oh. and while I was on the show the phone rang they had a phone you know one of those telephone um, answering question periods and I picked up the phone and it was Pris I couldn't believe it and I couldn't say a word I was like a babbling idiot you know I kept saying things like well where are you and uh, how are you and uh, and it was a split screen thing they had arranged prearranged what thing. I thought found so sweet about that was that you wanted to be good enough to be worthy of her someday yes, I did Did you ever tell her that I think so I think she knows all about it because I talked about her a lot I remember X Reed did a big interview and she sent me a letter about it or something and and uh, I was just, I still have those pictures of her. How? She was the girl next door, the blonde girl next door on the picket fence. I thought she was just terrific. How did you make it work, especially convincing your family in the Bronx with uh, no one else in your, in your family was in the no, theater? Where they no, no. Your father was a shoemaker. How That's did you right. tell your, your, your family you were going to be an actor? They, I think they kind of knew it because I was always acting. I really never wanted to be anything but an actor. And I was always giving shows. There was always a show going on in my house, you know, and I would make up plays, and I would cast them, you see, and I would tell people if they were good or if they weren't any good. I think they always knew. And um, when other kids wanted to be firemen and policemen and doctors and things, I kept saying, no, 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 I want to be a movie star. I mean, it had, you know, because I was a big movie buff. And, uh, and very early on, I started to train for it. And then I went out with Claire Tree Majors Children's Theater for years, you know, doing... You did Snow White? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and Hans Brinker and the Seven Old King Cole and things like that. So I, I, and then I started to study and I saved my money because I came from a very poor family. But I was sa always saving money just to go to classes, to learn, to learn the craft. And uh, eventually ended up with um, Uta Hagen, who was a wonderful teacher. Yes. And, uh, and things started to happen marvelously for me and then I started to land commercials when the common man came into vogue you know you had to be blonde and and uh, sort of nondescript looking in those days to get commercials you know and then they decided to go with the everyman look the common man look and that's when I came in and they said he should do something like a Drano commercial so I became Willie the plumber on the Drano commercial and made a lot of money you know which was terrific and and that paid for more uh, 
drama classes, and and uh, and I think one year I did twenty two Broadway shows. That oh. I mean, that means there were twenty two flops. Yeah, but, but I was always employed, you know. And, and do you think being fun. poor, growing up that way, you have a more of an appreciation for the luck you've had in your life? Absolutely. Well, I hate the word luck because you've worked hard. But it is luck too, because I know a lot of very talented people that have not not made it. No, no, luck has a great deal to do with it. I mean, if Neil Simon had not been there at that performance of an off-Broadway play, uh, I might not be sitting here. So it is, it is luck, too. But you really appreciate is. things more Very because much. you grew up during Very hard much. times? And because it happened to me at, at a later age. I mean, I, I first came into prominence, so to speak, when I was in my late 30s. You know, so I wasn't just a kid. Mm. I don't know what would have happened had I been 18 or 19 and suddenly come into a lot of money. Were there ever times you wanted to give up, Jimmy? Never. With the five flops? Never and, even thought no? about it. No, never entered my head. How about television? Caliucci's department was so good. Will you ever mm. do another series, do you think? Oh, I loved Caliucci's I would do. They're talking about a series now for me. I, sure, I would do another series, but I, I'm always terrified. Uh, uh, I was offered a series where I was, they wanted me to play a dog. All the characters were <laughs> dogs. You know, you wore a little Dr. Denim suits and just your face shirt. And I read this thing and I thought, I really hate this. And suppose it were a hit. You know, for five years I would be a dog. <laughs> and I thought, I really can't. And, you know, and the money is its very lucrative. And they make it almost like an offer you can't refuse. But I, I said, no, I think I'm going to pass this one up. So I'm afraid of one of those, but if you can get something like Taxi or, or the old Mary Tyler Moore shows, or those wonderful things, sure, then it would be great fun. Yeah, but or like Colucci's Department, which I really love. Quality um, must be important, though, to you. Terribly you know? important. I mean, to look at a film like uh, Only When I Laugh, it, amazing, uh, uh, because of the quality. It yeah, must please you so that, much. That kind of work does, yeah, it certainly oh, does. It's great. Jimmy, come and see us again in Boston. Thanks.